<laughs> and there we are. <laughs> there we are. Welcome back. Yep. Um, this is uh, building responsive UI with uh, with Bootstrap. Um, still John Galloway. Still John Galloway. Still Christopher Harrison. And uh, before we get into the next module, there's a couple of last uh, little things that we just want to kind of reiterate from uh, from before. Uh, first of all, there's uh, been a lot of chatter in the uh, in the Q and A window, which has been fantastic. We yeah, thank you. Thoroughly enjoy um, uh, the uh, the banter back and forth. Um, but there's been a lot of questions around, uh, in particular, the um, Bootstrap snippets mm -hmm. and around uh, NuGet packages. So I just want to highlight kind of real quickly um, both of those. First of all, that Bootstrap snippets, that's what's going to give you that IntelliSense inside of there. Um, do keep in mind that you are going to need to shut down and open back up Visual Studio. But where that's located is if you go under Tools and then Extensions and Updates. And then inside of here, you're going to notice I already have it installed. Um, but you're going to notice that if you just go to online, you can do a search right inside of there. Mm -hmm. And it's just simply bootstrap and give it a second here. And then it will be bootstrap snippets, which would be up towards the very top. Um, and then you would have an install button right there, which mm -hmm. I don't have because well, I've already installed it. Yeah. Hey, clever like that. So um, that's where you're going to go to uh, to install that. The second one is there's been a lot of questions about the version of Bootstrap that we're using. Mm -hmm. We're using version 3.2. How do you update that? Well, the way that you update that is by going into Manage NuGet Packages. And then under updates, you can see all the packages that you might have for that particular project mm -hmm. that need to be installed. Now, you are going to notice that there's no automatic updates here. And to a certain extent, that's kind of a bad thing because you have to remember to go back and update it. But in the long run, it's a good thing. Definitely a good thing. Every developer on the planet has some horror story that they can tell you that they went in, they updated a DLL, they updated a JavaScript file from version X to version X.0.0.1. And all of a sudden, nothing worked anymore. Right. Um, so by allowing you to manually go in and update each package individually, assuming that there aren't dependencies, it gives you a lot more control over when you're going to upgrade everything. Mm -hmm. So just a couple little things that I wanted to highlight. Yeah, and if we can cut over to my screen here. Mm -hmm. So the things I wanted to point out, just to drive that point home, Christopher's he's using an empty ASP.NET project, so there mm -hmm. aren't any other dependencies. Here's what I've got in mind. So this was file new project, and these are all the things that have updates available. And these are things I need to make my decision whether I'm going to install them. So for instance, jQuery, by default, it's installing 1.10.2. And I could update to 2.1.1, but Keep in mind that th I'm going to lose support for older versions of IE there. Right. So this is something where it really does make sense to, you know, to look at these and to, and to read through and to understand what's involved in those updates. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So you know, kind of choose wisely, and that's why none of that is automatic. Um, because again, you know, there's so many different combinations of JavaScript files, applications, DLLs. Um, you know, sometimes it just doesn't work because it's the second Tuesday of the month. You know, um, it, it seems that way sometimes. <laughs> but um, but anyway, you know, it gives you more control that way. Yeah. Yep. So. And, uh, and OK, so one other thing I wanted to point out before we dig into this next session is uh, back on my screen again here, we've got these are the um, we have been checking the code in at the end of each session, you know, g after a few minutes uh, to, to get our get things straightened out. But we've been <laughs> go we've get been, another drink of water. <laughs> exactly. But we've been pushing things up. You can see all the updates through the day. Um, so you can see we've got kind of the, um, you know, here are the. This is the current version of the of Christopher's demos, and then in each of these, if you look, for instance, here's my components. I've got uh, two of them there. You know, we've got snapshots of them. So, so you can see we're pushing the code up as we go. Um, so, I just want to make you aware if you're interested, if you'd like, if you missed some code that we typed, and you'd like to see what's happening, uh, you can find it there. 
that out of the way, let us talk about Visual Studio and ASP.NET integration. Let's do it. Okay, so uh, here's the outline. Here's what we'll be covering. Browser link, which is magical and definitely very helpful <laughs> in working it's with... so cool. Uh, yeah, working with front-end code. This is really, really helpful. Uh, we'll look at what's in the templates by default. Um, Christopher showed that a little bit earlier. We'll dig in a little deeper. Then we're going to kind of go beyond and we'll talk about scaffolding optimization, both in MVC and in web forms. Um, and then finally, we'll show off some of the kind of top tools. We've been using them throughout the day, but I just want to make sure you know about them. And time permitting, we'll dig into bundling and minification a little bit. So browser link. So the idea, um, Earlier in the day, I went through and I changed my um, CSS, and all of a sudden it was updated in the browser. Whoa, what happened there? And that is because Visual Studio has uh, the ability to connect to multiple running browsers, anything running on local hosts. So you'll see in this screenshot here, we've got, we've got IE, we've got Chrome, and some no-name phone here in the middle, a uh, phone <laughs> emulator. And because, because all right. it's all running on local host, then uh, it's got, <laughs> it's got a, a, a socket connection, and that means as I make changes in the browser, it's pushing that out uh, to any connected browser on my local host. Really handy. So, um, so let's take a look here. So I've got, uh, this is code that I was running earlier today, and here instead of just, let me see, I'm gonna do, okay. So. Uh, the I'm sound gonna, effects help. Whoop. Okay, so I'm going to say browse with, and instead of, like, I can have a default browser, but I can also say browse with, and here I'm picking, I would like, you know, say, for instance, Chrome and IE, right? And so then when I say browse, and I, I can set a browser size, so we'll say 100 by 600, I'm going to click browse, and we'll zoom out so we don't all get dizzy, okay? So this is bringing, this, here's the browser coming up. I just want to show you um, with everything side by side. So yes, it is very crowded to try and fit all this together, but I just want to show so, so it's very clear what's happening, right? So uh, if I could grab the handle here, which I don't seem to be able to do. Um, <laughs> so, you know, maybe, maybe this will be a short demo. Um, this is one of those while, while you're kind of positioning everything. Yeah, exactly. It's worth mentioning, this is fantastic on multiple monitors. That I actually yes. have three monitors back at my desk, and so what I'll do is I'll have either two uh, browsers on one window, or I'll have one on one and one on the other, and then mm -hmm. I'll have Visual Studio in the middle, and I'll go in, I'll make the, the handful of changes that I want, and then I'll just simply hit a real quick refresh, and then I'm able to just quickly see what uh, what updates have, uh, have been made. Yep. And um, I, I know that you've got a Everything position, but I just want to also mention real quickly, you don't have to launch the browsers from that window. That if you navigate to, in this case, localhost colon 12463, um, really good point. that's where the application is being hosted, um, you'll actually notice that you can um, still do that browser link, even though that you didn't navigate directly through it. Yep. Yeah. So just to, to make that clear here, I'm going to bring up Chrome. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't have done that. There we go, okay. And so I'm browsing to it there. So I, this wasn't launched from Visual Studio in that case. And then now uh, let's, let's look at a few things it can do. So first of all, if I go in and I wanna find out where it's saying the application name. Uh, so there it says application name index home. So I wanna say, you know, my cool site. And I save that. So then, over here now, because that didn't go across, let me go to something smarter. Uh, I'm going to go to, um, let's go to the index. There it is, Bootstrap Components, and I'll just say, and save that. And that should be, not sure what I'm doing wrong there. That should be updating. <laughs> <laughs> so you saw me doing it earlier, and it was working. So I'm, uh, it's the after lunch uh, something going on. Um, but the idea is, as I'm typing there, it can sync over. It can also, um, I can go in and make changes using the inspect, uh, inspect element, and it'll push them back over into the code. Now, because, uh, because that wasn't working, it's, it's very possible that, that this one either, and I'm doing something wrong. I want to show uh, two other things. There's one is I can click on inspect, and as I move around, you'll see as I'm moving around in the 
H or in the browser in Chrome over on the right, it is highlighting the line of code in the correct file. So here it's in layout CSHTML because I'm in the header. As I move down into the page, it switched over into the actual view I'm working on. And then one other thing here is if I go into uh, design mode and I click design, I can actually type in here. And so, you know, get rid of those. And you notice as I um, type over there on the right, that's actually pushing those changes from the browser back over into, um, into my source code. Yeah, which when you're playing around with uh, with Bootstrap, a lot of times it's just easier to just go in and update the the screen itself. That a lot of people have been asking, well, how about a WYSIWYG editor? Right. Well, how about just use the browser? This is about <laughs> as close as it gets. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so you know, we've we've done demos about this before in other MVAs. I'm not going to go into huge detail, but I just want to remind you it's there. And the reason is because you know, if I I can go in and start changing things like these classes. And if I, you know, if I do something like that, and then uh, this makes it quick to go in and, you know, I can see exactly, okay, that isn't working, what did I do wrong? And then I can go in and make changes. So um, I think I'm actually running this out of a OneDrive for Business uh, folder, and I think that that is goofing things up, and I should not have done that lesson learned. Um, but that, that does make it very quick as I'm making the changes. One thing also that it does do is it's, it's pretty good with syncing HTML. Um, but with CSS is really where you'll see. So if I go in and make changes to the CSS, you'll see those changes happen immediately. Um, so so I can go in. I can say you know something like um, body. You know I can say ground color red. And then as I save that, you'll see it push over. So, so you see there it did without me going in and refreshing either. It pushed it over to both of them. Um, and that is, there's the culprit. It's because of, because uh, I'm running out of that sync folder, which was just really stupid. Ah, uh, okay. Yep. Yep. So lesson learned there. But so the, the, the point is that it will sync over, um, and it also does sync as well with, um, with emulators, so you know, just uh, I I think it's smarter in the interest of time. Just trust me on it. But the um, it does work as well with um, going into the like the phone emulator. Yep. Um, close current tab, and we'll do that. And we'll do that, and we'll go back in. Great. Okay. And there's plenty of other stuff on Channel Nine, especially on Browser Link. You can find you know whole long demos on it. You can do all kinds of crazy stuff with it. Uh, so now let's go on to templates, and I want to yes. look at what is in the box. And so I am going to, we'll keep looking at that one there because it's still going to mostly work for this. So actually, we'll do file new project. Hmm. Now I haven't changed this much. We'll be good here. When I go in and create a project, I, mean, I have a screenshot here. That's what I wanted to do. So when I do file new project, I get, you'll see on the, on the left, I've got an MVC application. On the right, I've got a web forms application. What's hopefully obvious is that they're really pretty darn similar. So let me see if I can pull this off. If I do that, pen, is this going to work for me? And if I do that, there we go. So CSS, same CSS, same fonts. If we went into the scripts here, we've got the same bootstrap. Um, so, you know, really the point is, this is really cool that the, um, they're the same, right? So obviously the dependencies are the same. Also really the layout, pretty much identical, which means it's great you can use skills, code, CSS, mm -hmm. et cetera, back and forth between the two. And so that was just file new project on, uh, file on new both project. of those. And one was the web forms, one was MVC. They both came with the exact same bootstrap. Yep. So they're, awesome. they're what's it's included. one ASP.net. It sure is. Finally. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so, so um, you know, to kind of highlight what we've got there, so obviously the CSS. Those are the CSS classes that let you do all that stuff. Those glyph icons I showed you earlier, those are pulled in as font files. So that is this and this. Boy, it is, once you start drawing, you just keep on a drawing. <laughs> so, and, and you'll see those. It's addictive, isn't it? <laughs> it is. You're just releasing your inner John Madden. So now you're wondering, why, what are all these, you know, I've got TTF and WOFF, and there's a lot of different web font files, and in order to get cross-browser support, 
with modern and older browsers, et cetera, you've got support SVG, scalable gra vector graphics, true type, EOT is another um, older font form. So there's a lot of different um, font formats, and this gives you all of those. Mm -hmm. Uh, JavaScript is, Christopher is going to be showing you that later, and those are those things where things just all of a sudden magically work. Um, includes even things like, I don't think you'll show this, but transitions and animations, which it, are pretty it, it does have that capability. Yep. Yep. And then finally, um, one nice, nice thing, of course, is that these are referenced in the layout if you're in MVC or if you're in web forms, it's in the master. Um, and then there's also, so it's all kind of wired together as well. So. If you did, if you just included the NuGet package, you would get this stuff. Um, you would get those files, and then the references are what you have to add manually. Um, or if you just do file new project, you'll see that. Okay, so now I need to discard, unfortunately, that artwork. Um, uh, so just as a reminder, I'm so disappointed. Yeah, <laughs> as I was, a reminder, I was going to ask you to print that so I could frame it. Put it in my uh, put it in my office. Well, let's go back then. I'll do that. I think I remember <laughs> myself. Um, so, so this is file new project, what you'll get here. So, you know, again, just kind of standard look and feel. This is all driven by Bootstrap. Um, okay, so let's just quickly look at, I'm going to do that file new project, actually, I've decided, changing my mind. So, uh, so here, file new project. This is my third web application ever. Uh, this time I'm going to do web forms, just give some equal time here. And I'm going to close this guy. There we go. OK, so it's scaffolding everything out. Um, you notice if you look quickly down in the corner in the status bar, it goes through and it says uh, adding this NuGet package, adding that NuGet package. Mm -hmm. And some of those are for Bootstrap. Okay. So now if we go in, I'll, uh, you know, we'll see this content. There we've got our uh, CSS. Oops, I don't know what I did there. There's our CSS, right? Uh, then we've also got our scripts. Here's our bootstrap. Uh, we've got our fonts. And then the important kind of putting it all together um, is we have the uh, site master. Default ASPX. Yep. Uh, I know. Font site memories. Master. Right. So here's the site master. The important things I want to point out here uh, one is, no, that's not what I want to look at. Uh, it's part of the bundling. And then this should actually look relatively similar to what we've been looking at earlier today. So once we, you know, there's, there's some web form specific stuff here. For instance, these scripts here, uh, the bundling uh, that brings in Bootstrap here is using the script manager. Okay, so slightly different. Once you get past this stuff and get into the actual meat of the page where you're looking at the HTML, it's the same HTML, right? So that's very handy. Um, <laughs> the login, can, you know, I'm just, I'm, you know. Fond memories, right? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, so, and actually, we did have some questions on, you know, how do we integrate this stuff in? Um, generally, the way, the, more of the recent web forms controls mm -hmm. have used templates. And so, um, here, we'll zoom in here a bit. So, any of these, you know, anonymous template, login template, um, I, I was more of a fan of the list view, um, and, and you know, some, so okay. as you're moving away from, from you know, like grid views and, and um, things that, that really generate a lot of the HTML, if you can move to ones that are allowing you to insert HTML mm -hmm. templates. And that'll um, make the transition if you decide to, to MVC that much easier. Exactly, exactly. And they also make it a lot easier to put in these classes right there. Mm -hmm. So instead of generating that on, the, you know, in backend code, you're actually just using um, templated code to do that. Great. So there we go. Let me. I don't know what I'm doing there. Uh, let's you're rebroadcasting our broadcast. Oh, nice. Yep. <laughs> okay, so that's really it. You know, as far as the templates go, that's what's that's what's in the box. Now we'll look at a little bit of scaffolding optimization. So we looked at file new project over and over today. Um, and file new project is generating code for you, and that code is going to include, um, you know, obviously that navigation stuff, um, but it also will include other other content in the page. For instance, editing um, editing scaffolds and that kind of thing. Yep. So we can customize what HTML is output, and we can take advantage of it to do more bootstrappy stuff. Right. Or bootstrappy stuff. Exactly. Yes. Yep. <laughs> we can bootstrapify it. So <laughs> we can do that either per project using scaffold templates, 
<laughs> or we can do that uh, at a shared level, so meaning you know multiple projects we can share that. I'm going to be mostly looking at per project because the shared stuff honestly is a little bit tough. Um, but I'll, I'll, sh I'll at least point you in the right direction. Okay. Language lessons from John Galloway. Exactly. There's a whole um, conjugate the word bootstrap. You know, it, it, as far as I'm concerned, you can add ubble. If I and S at the end of any word. As so, long as you don't start using nouns as verbs and verbs as nouns. Then, right then okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, All right. That's funny. my only ask for you today. Okay. All right. Um, I'll, I'll do my best. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so uh, here's what I, I hate the verbification of the English oh. language. <laughs> um, okay. So, um, back to my happy place. So let's talk about what to change and what not to change. <laughs> so here are some, some suggestions on things that, that make sense to change when you're changing scaffolding. One is table classes. That's a pretty obvious um, quick win here. And so you have, you know, we talked earlier, Christopher said tables, don't want to use them for navigation, want to use the grid. That's true. What are tables good for? Tables are good for tabular data. If you want something that looks like it's in Excel or something like that, right, then <laughs> yep. that's, that's a table of data. Tables are actually pretty good for that. And that's um, it. Tables are good for tabular, tabular data. Tabular data. So, yes. so <laughs> as an example, I need to get out of there and I need Not instead, laying things out. Let's go here. And so tables actually can look pretty darn good. Um, let me see. So if I go into the CSS area and there it goes. Here it goes. <laughs> All right, tables. Um, so here's an example of some of the different tables. Basic table here. Notice, I mean, this looks generally pretty good. And making tables look pretty in HTML, still kind of a pain in the neck. <laughs> <laughs> so just, just to be able to say. That's a polite way to put it. Yes. So to be able to say table class equals table, which yes, is actually kind of silly. Um, but to say table class equals table um, and get this look up here is a thumbs up for me. If I, if I had that icon ready to paste right in here, that's still <laughs> thumbs up. And then you can do stuff like striped, bordered, and even hover rows. So notice as I'm hovering over this um, that it's, it's showing that indication. Um, so, you know, pretty, pretty nice stuff. We can even have danger columns, danger rows. That is the danger zone. Out of scope for today. Are okay, you so uh, into it? <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay, so those are some of the main things. <laughs> things where you may want to go further for your for your scaffolding. Uh, if you want to customize tabs, say for instance you want your navigation to use tabs, you could definitely do that. Uh, groupings, like I showed, um, navigation, um, also a fix. Um, I I forget. I don't think you show a fix, but I do fix, show a fix. Okay, so not going to spoil that. What I recommend you don't do is change around your design. Um, so anything, you know, you're not going to want to change your scaffolding to make the page design look different. Think about, you don't want to break anything. Uh, you don't want to change something that would cause changing a theme to break, if that makes sense. So design kind of things, pulling things left and right and all that kind of stuff, that's more of a CSS kind of thing. All righty, so let's look at scaffolding. And so here we get into, uh, this is a new web forms application, which is nice, but actually I'm going to start with a new MVC application, which is going to be MV, or is number four. So here we're going to MVC. And the reason I'm doing this is because customizing scaffolding is a little bit simpler with MVC than it is with web forms. Um, although it's possible in both now. So when I go in and I create a new model, so let's create a new model, which is a person model, maybe. I guess I'll do an album just to keep with. Right, sure. OK, yeah. so we'll give it a couple properties. Int ID, uh, string title, and prop string band. OK, so there we go. So now we want to go in and we want to scaffold this out. So scaffolding is the process of creating a new uh, controller and views that go, uh, go with that controller based on a model type. So I'm going to say add controller. 
This brings up this scaffolding dialogue. So uh, we went into this in more detail in our recent MVC MVA. I'm not going to go. In, I'm not going to explain it all here. Uh, but here, uh, by the way, if you yeah, if you are more interested in uh, in this while John's kind of doing his thing over here, yep. um, it's definitely worth mentioning the fact that we did an MVA um, on exactly this. So if you are curious about how MVC works and want to get started, um, you can definitely check out our uh, our MVA on that. Um, and it actually just went live, yeah. um, like about three weeks ago, two weeks yep. ago. So yeah, definitely check it out. So yep. yes, there may or may not have been spaghetti jokes during. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here I'm scaffolding this out. So what it's doing is it creates a controller that's going to allow me to view, edit, delete, all that, a list of, of albums. Um, it also creates these, for instance, if I want to look at a list, it's going to create a simple table um, that shows all my albums here. So I'm going to run it. We'll just take a look just so we know what we're working with, right? So I'm going to go in, here's my album list, and we'll create a couple of albums. All right, so create new, we'll create, you know, title the um, first album, and this is the <laughs> Christopher Gosh. Harrison singers. <laughs> Nobody would <laughs> want to buy that. Let me tell you. And then th this one will be the reunion album. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, because uh, you didn't have uh, the in front of it. Oh. Well, apparently we changed our name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Oh well, and so just to show, you know, here I can go. <laughs> Boom, okay. Great. So this there is your standard table. And it's it's actually not bad. This yeah. is so what what is it doing for us? If you look at this is because it is table class equals table. So it is using the standard bootstrap table. Nice. Um, and and that's uh, that's what I'd want them to do. I wouldn't want visual or you know the the scaffolding system to make assumptions about what kind of table I want. However, I want a stripe table and I want that hover table, and I may want condensed. I'm still thinking about it. Um, so there's that. Uh, one other thing I did want to point out: if this is bugging you, table class equals table. Stand by. We're going to talk about this this during that last session. <laughs> okay. This can be fixed. Okay, so we scaffolded some this out. It created some some uh, views. The views create HTML that that work pretty well. But I want to take a little more control here. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to delete my controller and my views. And one of the nice things about scaffolding is since. Uh, it was very easy to create the views. Uh, it's very easy for me to delete them as well. I, I just don't care. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to right click and I'm going to add. And I'm going to add a new item. And my new item is a special one using the side waffle template. <laughs> so now here's. I still love that name, side it's, waffle. It's pretty good. So now it's time for a, a quick little segue. I'm going to go to sidewaffle.com. Side, side waffle. waffle. So they explained this to me a few times. I still don't completely get it. But the <laughs> idea is if you go to a restaurant and you order something and you're having trouble deciding, do, do I want that delicious steak or a waffle? Then you can order the steak and then get a side of a waffle. I, I, I well, I, I did that with a pancake the other day. There you I, go. I wanted the hash, and you know, I, and I ordered a so pancake. You got a side, side. pancake. So I got so a side pancake. So not a side waffle. Very similar. Yes. Very similar. Right. So side waffle includes so. We, you can add things to a project. Right click, add CSS, right click, add JavaScript file, whatever. Well, Sidewaffle includes a bunch of other awesome web things. And by other, I mean a ton of other stuff. So I'll just give you a quick example of a few things just to, to kind of point some out. Uh, an SVG file. I'm a fan of SVG. This makes it easy to do that. Readme markdown file. That's nice. Um, there are things in here like even, just, just to show that it's kind of a lot of stuff. If you wanted to create a Google Chrome extension, it's got everything you need for that. If you wanted to create you know, a blank scaffolder, 
anything to do with AngularJS. There's tons of stuff to do with that, right? So uh, there's even something like a basic build script, okay? So there, this is a great way to add in a bunch of other, when you say right-click add item, if I want a lot of cool stuff, I can add in Sidewaffle, again, a free, temp, or a free Visual Studio extension. Okay, so I'm gonna type in scaffolding and narrow down the list. There it is. So I wanna add in the ASP.NET scaffolding T4 files. There are other ways to get these. You can dig around on, uh, on your computer for them, um, but, but these are the templates that are used to create that scaffolding. So these are kind of boilerplates that it'll go through and it'll say, okay, you want to scaffold something based on this model? Well, I'm going to play fill in the blank and I'm going to you know, fill this stuff in for you. Mm -hmm. So for instance, if I want to look at the list template, this is what is used to generate the output page for a list. So here, where it says H2 view name, that view name is generated based on the type of model. But here I could say, this is the spot for, right? Um, so I can start filling that out. I can also, if I wanted, I could put this in a Jumbotron, right? Yay, Jumbotron. Yeah, so I'm not sure if I feel that crazy. Maybe, we'll think about it. But I definitely do wanna change my table. So here's where I can do that. So here, table class equals table. Well, let's do a little more with that. So I'm gonna go in to my table and I would like to add, I think table hover, and I also want table condensed, okay? So I'm gonna grab this table hover class. Oh goodness, I should just type it in. I don't get that autocomplete in there because it's a T4 file, which is a different type. So that's one thing I got to get right. Don't okay. forget to take out the dot. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. That was a mistake I, I, I would make, and I was just... <laughs> <laughs> I would definitely have just made that. Okay, and I'm also going to do condense. Now, when I save this, absolutely nothing happens. Nothing is changing until I scaffold it. And just because I want to have a little bit of fun, I want to also put in a thumbs up here, so it really is time, if you'll just indulge me for a second while I put in that thumbs up. So I need to grab my glyph icon. And you know, it'd be really cool actually if I, um, oh, I want a star, right? <laughs> so I could do, you know, that, and I believe it's just span and put those classes in. Um, so, it is. Yeah, there, so span, we'll do search, I'll be fine. Okay. So I just want to show this is, you know, you can scaffold up as much as you want. Okay. And which one was it? I think glyph icon push pin. That sounds good to me today. Okay. So there we go. Again, so far nothing has changed. All we've done is change our template. Okay. So now I'm going to go in. I'm collapsing that up. So that sits here in my project. It is only used for scaffolding, and that's, that's all it is. It is good, though, that I'm, it's part of my source code. Mm -hmm. This is this important source artifact, so this is something I'm going to check in, source control, and all that. This is part of my project. Okay. So now I'm going to go in and re-scaffold. So you just told Visual Studio what to do when it goes in to create that view for you. Yep, and I only did the edit view. Uh, I could definitely, I can go in and start changing all of them. Okay. I um, mean, I recommend, you know, if you want to go in and start, if you know Bootstrap well, as you start learning it, maybe you want to change everything about it, right? So you can do that. So now I'm going to go in and we'll take a look at our, at our list, our index. Okay. So here, this is a spot for index because it's an index view. It's got my glyph icon, which is nice, but more importantly, it's got that, okay? So if I was only doing this for one, no big deal. But then as I go in and I start creating other models, it's going to use this for every time I scaffold. So just to drive, drive that home. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna add a new uh, model. This is gonna be a person. A uh, person's just gonna have an ID and a name. Uh, tab. Yes. 
enter ID. Deflated mm -hmm. man, person man. All right. So now I'm going to go in and we're going to scaffold that out. And, and we're just doing this to make it obvious what's going on, that every time I scaffold in this project from now on, it's going to use that new template, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll go in and I'll say, I would like this to be now with a type of person. It's going to continue to use that same data context class. Scaffold it out. OK, and so now let's look at my person view. And my person view is going to, uh, that's pluralized to people. So my people index. And again, here's all that wackiness there, and it's using the right template. And now just, you know, to, it would be mean to um, show you all that and not actually take advantage of it. So we're going to run this, and we're going to look at the list of albums. And now we should see that we can hover over them, which is nice. Uh, it's list didn't, didn't work because I did something wrong. Oh, oh, you have a code migration. Oh, dear, dear goodness. Okay, so I'm going to, I think, <laughs> give up. <laughs> uh, you know what? Um, just try this real quick. Um, yeah. Delete the person. B delete the person completely. Yeah, delete the person controller. Delete. Um, yeah, you'll probably right. you'll have to stop debugging. Um, yeah. But yeah, just delete everything uh, about the person. So delete that. Hopefully that'll just get us back um, to yeah. Steady. Delete the controller and delete the class. And burn the entire studio to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and let's take a look at the context. And I'm going to get rid of that guy. And if that doesn't work, the other thing that does work is just changing the um, in web config, changing the name of the database. But it just rubs me wrong. Okay, so album index. So if that's, yeah, there it goes. Okay, so here, thank you. <laughs> You're Senior very welcome. For preva prevailing. So there we've got that. So first of all, we've the got The studio a, is still standing, by the yes. way. Just to <laughs> <laughs> so here we've got our push pin, and here we've got our hover. So just very, you know, very simple, actually. Mm -hmm. um, to go in and start kind of making it your own. And, and this is really something that, that I hear frequently from people who like the scaffolding in, in, uh, in MVC and Visual Studio, because I, I really dig that. I, uh, a lot of times you just need something real, real quick and easy, or you just want a better starting point that I, I'm not always a fan of, of the different forms and tables and so forth that it creates. I really want to be able to go in and, uh, and better put things together that match our design. And so having that capability is, uh, is fantastic. And then, of course, at the end of the day, Bootstrap is nothing but HTML, CSS, JavaScript. So it's not like it's it's not unlike scaffolding anything else. I think I said that correctly. It's just <laughs> like scaffolding anything else that it really is just that HTML. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's really yep. cool. It is nice, and and you can imagine, you know, given fifteen more minutes or whatever, which I don't have, but take, <laughs> using Bootstrap and then using something like data tables or some other Java or jQuery plugins and making a searchable table, right? So I can yep. narrow in on this table. I could do quite a bit. And once I've got something I like, I could put that into my templates, and then I can reuse those templates among other projects yep. as well, just copying those in. Yep, absolutely. Okay. So that is MVC scaffolding. So now I want to show you using um, web form scaffolding. So this is actually a relatively new thing. We have added in a new scaffolding system. And so one of the things I've got installed is web form scaffolding right there. So this is actually, it's open source. Um, and it is a scaffolding system. You can find the source code for it out on GitHub. And what this does is it allows me to go in and I can create a new model and do the exact same kind of thing. So if I was smart, I would have copied that over, but instead I'm just going to retype it. Um, so I'll do a person, right? And then this guy is also going to have an ID. By the way, he's using code snippets there. If you just type out prop and then go tab, tab, it'll automatically give you that, which is, is pretty yeah. slick. Snippets really are pretty pretty great. And, yeah. the, and that whole thing, the reason that these, uh, these items are highlighted is to allow me to do that. So I can tab, tab, and move, move between them. So actually, this is kind of interesting. There it is. My mouse is not working. 
I think I'm out of batteries or something. Ah, fortunately for me, I have a touch screen. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm going to, um, what was I gonna do? So I'm going to right click on this and that might be a little interesting. Hold down and it will bring that, yep. Yeah, if oh. you hold down on it and then release. There we go. There's your right click. Add, and then I'm gonna say add new scaffolded item. And here I can say web forms because I've installed that extension and then I say add. And then I'm gonna pick for model class. There we go. There we go. Thank you. Thank you, Barry. And uh, actually the battery was fine. It was just a trick to get him on the screen. We've, we and, promised and, we and, were gonna do you know, that. Yeah, the, the problem is he controls the cameras. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. Um, foiled again. Okay, so here I'm gonna add this in. I believe, I forget, I can say that. And then I'll say add. So this is scaffolding as well. And I'm not going to get into the, the um, actually, yeah, I can show the scaffolding templates. What's the trade-off here in MVC, you have to go in and install those custom, those scaffold templates. Right. Um, it, it's all kind of behind the scenes. That leaves your project looking cleaner and a lot of time you don't end up customizing scaffolding. Well, the way that Webform scaffolding works is it actually sh use, it shows you all these field templates and they're added directly in. The nice thing with this is I can customize how anything works. So for instance, if I say text values, I wanna go in and put some special bootstrap class only on text. Or if I wanna say only on integer edits or okay. only on email addresses, right? So I can go in and, and really start kind of taking advantage of all this stuff um, at that level. Nice. And so I can also go through and I can modify um, entire, those are field templates. Um, and, and so I can go in and start kind of changing the way that all this stuff is gonna work, right? Um, so that's, that's really kind of where I would get started in making those changes. Okay. Um, and while I'm at it, that actually kind of segues into the next level, which, uh, which is kind of customizing a little bit more. Um, so to customize MVC, Got this little link here I'm copying. I don't even know, uh, copy. Apparently it's difficult to copy. It's the after lunch. There it is. Copy issue. I, I, I'm just gonna keep rolling. <laughs> <laughs> so here we have custom MVC templates. This is out on the uh, ASP.NET site. Here's the URL for it right up there. And so um, this tutorial, shows how to go in and create a new MVC template. What this does is you do file new MVC and it actually allows you to extend that out. Now this is for the um, MVC three style. So these are, these are kind of the older ones. There's also uh, in Sidewaffle, there's something where you can go in and create scaffolders and also project templates, which is somewhere in here. Um, so if I want to create a custom project uh, or custom scaffolder uh, visual. There's a blog post here as well, creating a custom scaffolder for Visual Studio. This will show you how to kind of get started and do that. Right. It's, this is not something you're gonna do in a few minutes. This is good, pretty much a day's work. Um, yep. And you, you need to understand what you're doing. But this is where if you want to really get in and change something, mm -hmm. the benefit here is that this is going to make it so that you can um, reuse this among different projects. Okay. So, so that big, the big kind of thing I was pointing out there, scaffolding, you can do per project using scaffold templates. Or if you want to do you know, multiple places, you can do custom project templates or custom scaffolders. Awesome. Now let's look at Visual Studio support. And we've been looking at Visual Studio support all day, so I'm really just gonna kind of recap what we've got for you there. So one is that class IntelliSense. Which Yay. Is huge, <laughs> super, super useful, right? Um, so you can just go in and just start editing and that's, that's gonna work everywhere. That works all over the place. If you install Web Essentials, which again will install on Express, it installs on every version of, of um, Visual Studio 2013, uh, that will bring in things like that missing class detection, which is really helpful. So that's where it's going in and saying, well, you use button primary, but you didn't say it was a button, and that's not gonna work, okay? Uh, so again, we've been singing the praises of this bootstrap snippet pack. Um, 
<laughs> and so Eric is, yep. is a hero for having created this. This is really cool. I do want to also show, I believe I may have this open on GitHub. I don't have it. Um, the source code for that's available too. So if you want to go in, um, so if I go bootstrap snippet pack extension, and then I click on source code. That'll take you to the GitHub repository. Exactly, and, the, and this is worth pointing out here just because, okay, so say there's a, there is a snippet missing that you would like, you can actually go in and start changing these. And these are actually relatively easy to install on your own. You can just add another snippet in. So. <laughs> I, I, I always love the blame button. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's nice. Should I blame him? Um, okay, so there's that one. One other thing I did want to show is also this bootstrap bundle. And I don't have time to go into it in detail, but this one is, is pretty slick. This is another, this is bootstrapbundle.com. This will take you over to the Visual Studio Gallery. Mm -hmm. This is just one, I, I haven't you know, dug into it in detail, but um, what I saw of it, I, I liked. So, um, and I saw some good reviews of it as well. So if I go in here and I say new web application, and sure, I'll save that. I just, that sounds great. And now I'm going to create a, uh, let me see, I did that wrong. I should have said a new bootstrap bundle application. So this is bootstrap site. And then this goes through and I can say, I can pick from example or oh. I can. So here, check this out. Start bootstrap templates. So then I can register, which you should do. Um, so then you can go and you can say, I would like business casual or modern business. I can go through and pick one of those. So let's go business casual. And then I can fill in information for humans.txt, which is a way for people um, search engines can find out, you know, developers who worked on the site. And then when I go through there, that's actually going through and creating that. So that's kind of nice. Those are some mm. kind of pre-baked ones. And one other one I want to do, I'm, I'm not even going to show this one. I want to show the, the other option, which I didn't get time to show. So I'll create another new one, new project. Can you launch the... Uh, the um the project, I, I, I apologize. If this fails, this is all my fault. I just put John my, on the spot here. I, I'll be honest, I it might never be, do. Last night when I installed it, and I, I, there it goes. There we go. Okay. Okay. So, you know, very nice. Nice. Okay. So, and this. I feel like a, a, a good latte right about now. It, well, yes. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> I'm just going to say yes. <laughs> um, so, yeah, but so this is a nice kind of get started. Uh -huh. And then let's do one more, and we'll do, this is maybe even kind of cooler. If I go example layouts, and again, you should register. So here, you can go through and you can pick from all these different kinds of things, right? So let's say mm -hmm. we want to do a dashboard, okay? Then I can go in and I can pick a different theme, right? So this is kind of neat. Uh, let's do uh, using the superhero. Fill this out, and so then this is going through and creating a dashboard site. And there's different ones where you can actually click off and, and check off which ones you would like in there. Okay. So you know, again, uh, if, and and this is you know, you may not want to get if you want a F5. Sorry. Uh, absolutely. This may not be what you want to deploy to, to production. It might be, but even if you just want to get started and have some sample code to work with, yeah, that is nice, right? I mean, if you're going to create a, if you've got to go through and create a dashboard for work. This yep. is a pretty good start. You know? <laughs> so this this is really cool. Done um, and done. Yeah, and so this uh, Bootstrap bundle, I believe, I'm not sure if I can click on that. But that is from a, um, it, it's free, It's and it's from a consulting firm who is very cool. In, in, here's uh, da, 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 Bootstrap bundle. So that's, I think that's very smart of them to, you know, here's this free thing, and uh -huh. by the way, we're awesome. So, so definitely check them out. Um, so, by the way, we're awesome. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so we've looked at that. That really is is it. I mean, I do recommend going through and and looking. Um, I was answering one last question. Yeah. <laughs> um, sorry you know, if I hit the wrong button there. There you go, Joe. Um, your, your question has now been replied to. Oh, good, good. <laughs> you know, one other thing I do recommend doing, in addition to looking at those tools, yep. is look at the NuGet packages. Um, yeah. And you, you know, you've mentioned some. We've talked mostly about the extensions. Um, but if you look at, uh, on here for Bootstrap, you know, so here this is, this top one is the main Bootstrap package that is mm -hmm. maintained by the Microsoft Open Curve Foundation, which is um, the foundation that handles open source stuff. Yep. There's a lot of other great stuff in here. People are asking about Angular. Um, there's, 
you know, here's ones that have more specific MVC integration, Bootstrap Date Picker, just all kinds of great stuff. So Date I, Picker was a, has been a big one. A lot of people yep. have been asking about Calendar. Yep. Yep. So, I mean, definitely worth spending some time going through, you know, Sortable for a Bootstrap table. Oh, yeah. All kinds of great stuff. So, definitely spend some time going through and looking at the NuGet packages as well. And, and this is, you know, I've, I've said it before, and, and it's a stolen phrase from a buddy of mine, but it's so true, is that we're not launching rockets. Whatever it is that we're trying to do, somebody else has already done it. And, and the best code in the world is the code that's already written. Yeah. So take advantage of, of what other people have done. There's not necessarily a need to, to venture out on your own and start doing all of this from, uh, from scratch. Yeah, and you know, to build on that, it's not just about being lazy and not having to write the code. Right. Let's, well, which let's is be clear a, about that. that. That is a very big thing because when you write code, there's going to be bugs and they got to get fixed. But let's say you write flawless code every time. I, I write flawless code every I have proved that today. <laughs> I'm sorry. I write flawless. Okay, maybe Can we put not. a crown on him. Or <laughs> but, but okay, so so even if you write amazing, flawless co code, yep. you've got to maintain it, right? Right. And so the advantage of these NuGet packages and 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 you know using code that other people are writing is other people are also maintaining that code. Absolutely. Yep. Rant done. I think it's time for a break. Yep. Um, oh, uh, real quick, the uh, the links, the, that Bootstrap bundle that you just uh, mentioned. Yeah, let's go. Okay, so Bootstrap bundle. Oh, there was a waffle on, 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 on the side there a second ago. Ah, yeah, there's your side waffle. Side waffle. <laughs> yeah, so sidewaffle.com, bootstrapbundle.com. And then this one, you're just going to need to search for Bootstrap Snippet Pack, unless you're good at memorizing unique identifiers. Eight, six, seven, five. <laughs> anyway. Um, so that's that's kind of the the list, and definitely look around. Let mm -hmm. us know other other ones you recommend. Yeah. Um, so, thanks. Fantastic. All right. Well, let's uh, go ahead and uh, take ten, mm -hmm. uh, and then we're going to come on back and we're going to take a look at at uh, JavaScript functions, but we're not going to take a look at any JavaScript functions. We'll cliffhanger. Talk about, yeah, cliffhanger. <laughs> we'll talk about that when we get back. We'll see you guys back here in ten minutes.